Yes, guys, I all back. Please put it in the chat box. Yes, no, I mean yes. Okay, so we did one part of module three. Okay, now we are going to go to the next part. Sorry. So now we saw how to store uh, relational data, how to work with files, what are the different ways of storing files, uploading files to your Azure portal, okay, to your Azure account. Likewise, now if I want to work with non-relational data, I have a feature on Azure called as Azure Cosmos DB, okay? So for relational, we know that there has to be a structure imposed, right? There has to be a schema and it can at times lead to poor performance, okay? Because you have to, the data has to be related, there has to be a primary key and so on and so forth. Okay, so not all data, you can, you know, store it in the form of tables and rows. At times you need some flexibility, okay? Where you don't have any schema associated to the attributes inside the table, Right, so you want some flexibility around. Okay, and that flexibility comes with no SQL databases or non-relational data. Okay, so there are, like I said, there are four types of no SQL databases. One is documents. You have graphs. You have key value and column family stores. So where does then Cosmos DB come into picture? So Cosmos DB is a place where you can use all these non-relational uh, data uh, data bases, okay, onto one platform and in the form of an API, okay. You are storing data in the form of APIs. I'm pretty sure you all might know what API is, okay. So we are not. I'm not going to focus much on that, okay. So Cosmos DB gives me that gives me that flexibility that I can work with um, uh, any one of the NoSQL databases it, through these APIs. Okay, I can write um, I I can um, write queries. Yes, I am going to show a demo. Okay, a simple demo of how you have to work with Cosmos DB. So just a explanation that I'm giving. Okay, and now why use Cosmos DB? You know, there are two wonderful uh, reasons and two amazing features that Cosmos DB has. Okay, is that there is a multi-model approach. That means if you want to work with document database, you can do that. You want to work with MongoDB, you can do that. You want to work with Cassandra for column. If you want to work with Gremlin, you can do that. All these models are available in one account. So you are, all you have to do is create a Azure Cosmos DB account, okay? And in the form of APIs, just access any of these models you want to. And the second most amazing feature that I find in Cosmos DB is the turnkey distribution. Now, what is the turnkey distribution? Okay, it is something that makes your Cosmos DB globally available. You know, like, we talk about um, making our databases available across the globe. So SQL at times does not help you in that. But if you use Cosmos DB and hence the name, uh, you know, 
available to the cosmos and all like that. So you can see even the picture depicts that. Okay, so with just a click of a button, okay, if I want to make my database available globally, replicate my database, whether it's in uh, Cassandra, Gremlin, or MongoDB, or whatever, or NoSQL, or even SQL in the form of a JSON document, okay, if I want to make that available, I can do it through the Cosmos DB database, through the Cosmos DB service on Azure. Okay, so that's what is the most amazing two features of Cosmos DB. Okay, then, like I said, you have a multi-model approach. Okay, you have SQL API, but this is not like our SQL database. Okay, it uses JSON document. Okay, it, manage, it is used to manage uh, JSON uh, documents. Okay, then you have MongoDB. MongoDB the document storage. Then here there is a table API. Now what is a table API? You might be getting confused between the table storage and the Cosmos DB table API. They are completely different. Okay. Uh, uh, table storage, um, the disadvantage of using a table storage is that I cannot uh, manage scalability and um, Flexibility is very rigid in that uh, terms. Okay, so for me to use a table API is if I have to make it, you know, global across, uh, expand uh, or, you know, scale my uh, table storage, I can't do that. And it's a storage, I can't query it. Okay, whereas if I want to query a database, I can do that. I can query a key value storage. Okay, so that's the advantage that I have over uh, uh, the Azure table storage. Okay, so it does not offer great performance or scalability, whereas the table API of Azure Cosmos DB does that. Then we have Cassandra for column. It was developed. It is compatible if with the Apache Cassandra. If you have worked with it, you can do that. Okay. It's one of the it's one of the popular open sources for column storage. Okay, like tables and relational database. Okay, of course there is no schema. Okay, it's not that you have the same column for every row. Okay, then you have uh, Gremlin that is for graph. Okay, graph structures. So like you have a no, you have a vertex. You have um, yeah, yeah, they have their own. Uh, Documentation, I will be telling you all about it. Okay, then every node is connected to the edge, which represents the relationship. So you can see, Sue has a relationship. Okay, she reports to her manager, she has subordinates in, uh, below her. Okay, so they are kind of, you know, uh, like a relationship, like employee department relationship, okay, that you can have. Okay, so this is one of the examples of Gremlin. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are just going to see how to create a Cosmos TV um, account and just see how to simply provision, um, uh, you know, just work with a simple um, SQL document that is a JSON document. Okay. And I will show you all how to do that. We are going to just use a sample database. So guys, it's not in depth. Okay, that we are going to do. It's just a simple example that I'm going to show. I'm going to sh share my screen. So I'm going to come to Azure Cosmos DB. You can search for it over here. Okay. So I'm just going to say create a Cosmos DB account. So now here you can see each of them have their own uh, documentation as well. So if you click on learn more, you're going to get the documentation associated to that particular uh, API. Okay. So you can see the same things that I talked about. So if you want to work with NoSQL, you want to work with table API, you want to work with tables, you want to work with Gremlin, MongoDB, uh, Cassandra, so you can see they are all available available, okay, in the form of API. So you select which workload you want, which API or model you want, okay, and you can go ahead. So here I'm going to just take a simple NoSQL, okay, um, API that is for uh, a JSON document. So I'm just going to go with the 
resource group I've created. I'm going to just say my Cosmos DB account. Let's see if it takes. I'll add today's date. Okay, go for East US. I will suggest go for East US region. Let it be apply and I want you all to unselect this. Okay. So you can see if you come here, you can see these are the places where you can make easily, you can make global distribution. You can come and enable it here. Of course, it will require a, a good amount of money, but uh, still, if you want to make multi-region rights, you want it to happen, like people from multiple regions should come and write to your availability, uh, to your database, even from the availability zones, that is totally possible, okay, from the other availability zones, okay, like geo redundancy, if you want, okay, you want your data to be redundant, your uh, Cosmos data to be redundant, you can do that, but at the moment, I'm not going to go with this, these are features that you will have to explore more about, okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come and say review plus create. So these are, you know, big uh, uh, services. So they at times take uh, a lot of time to be created. Okay, so I'm just creating a basic account over here. Okay, so my resource has been created. Now I'm going to go to the resource. Okay, so you can see your account name reflecting here. Okay. I'm going to navigate to the data explorer tab. So there are a lot of videos also for you all to refer to. Okay. I'm going to go to launch quick start. So we are, we are going to use a sample DB. Okay. Again, like how we did in um, a SQL database. Okay. These all things are going to remain as it is. So just observe those settings. Okay like item container, okay. And now I'm gonna click on okay. I think everything's fine.
Yeah, so now you can see the data has been added. I have added a sample DB. Okay, to this sample DB, we are going to um, we are going to go to the container and we are going to go to items. Okay. So here you can see all the items that are there already. Expanders. Yeah, so this is from the sample DB that is there. So to this, I'm going to add a few more value. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, we are going to modify and add new item. Okay, so just. So click on new item. Whatever is this, just I already have uh, the item written. I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. OK, so this is like a JSON file that you need to write. So if you have to write your own items, you can do that. OK, you just have to create a database on this account. OK, and whatever data you have, you can upload. You can create it by click clicking on item. OK, and you can add the item. OK, so I am now going to save it. So it has successfully saved it. Now what we are going to do is we are going to query this particular item or query this database. OK, so for that we have to click on new SQL query. So like I said, uh, when you are writing, when you say no SQL, it's not that you're not going to use SQL, but you are going to add something to that. OK, so for that we have a command. So I'll just say um, there um, c dot name. So like a SQL command, we'll we'll write okay, huh? Where? But there there is a difference. Yeah, there has to be another term contains inside a bracket. That's it. And then. OK, and now I will execute this query. So you can see all the items OK related to where everything is helmet OK is displayed below. OK, so I'll just see if I can expand this. No, I can't. So there are four items that it is showing OK. Where I can find that the name is helmet, okay, of the per of the person, okay. So this is how you can create, okay, um, a simple Cosmos DB uh, account, okay. And you can just go back to the resource that you have created, okay. You can come to data. This thing you can add your own containers, okay, over here. Or uh, you can add your own uh, sample databases. You can work with this not available yet. OK, so here you can come add a database okay, of your choice from whatever you have. If you have an existing one, you don't have. OK, you can add it over here and do the basic provisioning and work with it. So this is how a sample. This is how a data uh, Cosmos DB uh, database works. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were not seeing my screen. Okay, I'll just show it to you again. So sorry. Can you all see my screen? OK, great. So I'll just repeat the steps that I did. OK, sorry, there's rainfall. So of course, there's some network issue going on. OK, so I like I we already created a Cosmos DB account. So, so I'm going to just go there. OK. 
I'm going to go to data explorer. OK, so I have already added a sample DB to my data uh, to my NoSQL API. OK, and this API is currently active. It's online. OK, so I'm just going to click on the container. Then items. So it's loading the item. So if you see here, it already has some information inside it. OK, you can come over and see the items and the ID associated to it. OK, so to this, I actually have already added a new. I'm going to add a new item. OK, for that, I already have written it, so I'm not going to waste time uh, mentioning it. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm now going to save this. I think it has it already has that doc. Yeah, so I think it will not work. OK, so I'll share this in the chat box or I'll even give you the link from where you can take it. OK, so. Uh -huh. Now we are going to query this. OK, so for that, I will just come to query. OK, and I'll say see. Where. Contains OK, little different and here you'll have to put brackets. OK, C dot name, so I'm not giving any column name as such or any item name. I'm not mentioning the key. OK, I'm just saying wherever you find helmet, just give me the output. So I'm now going to execute this query. So when I could find embed, helmets, whatever it has given me is giving me the output. OK. So this is how a Cosmos DB works. I hope you all could see. The. Execution. So guys, there is actually lots to learn um, in Cosmos DB. It's just a small part in this uh, training. OK, so that is why I'm not going much in depth. No, you can add a new item. Not only through query, so if you come over here in your sample container, you get an option to add a new item. You can add a new item over here in the form of a JSON. So since this is SQL API that I have selected, so I'm going to go. So it's a JSON document that we work with. OK, so I'm going to write a JSON file over here or JSON document. OK, so that is why uh, uh, an item you have to add to the existing database. OK. You, it will give you a notification below that it has added the item successfully. Then you can just query it and see it. Uh, you'll have to write the appropriate query then in order to see it. OK, so this is more or less about Cosmos DB. Yeah, just query it. Yeah. OK. So guys, there is lots to explore and we don't actually have much time to work around it. OK, so we have one entire module to go. And uh, uh, some exam related tips that I would like to give. Yeah, so multi model, like I told you, um, you can select what model you want. OK, it's not that like when you're working with um, post gray or something there you have to work with SQL only SQL data. But if you want to work with Cosmos DB, uh, I mean you want to work with. Uh, MongoDB, you want to work with Cassandra, whatever type of column you want, it's up to you. So in a way it's multi model, right? You can switch also like you want to make it available to customers across the globe. You can do. That. Okay, so 
that's the uh, beauty of using uh, cosmos db because it offers multi model like on one api like creating an api you can make it online for people okay to use it okay instead of your sql which is like created on azure one of the places you can make this available to customers across okay so that's one thing that is there in cosmos db so this this is a very fundamental thing that i have spoken about there is lots okay i will tell you all also if you want to go in depth of cosmos db what you can do i will be uh, definitely sharing tips on that as well okay but it's just a small part in um, this certification okay it's just an overview so that is why i'm not going in much depth okay so just a quick check like which api should you use to store and query json documents uh, you will go for postsql right yes guys cassandra is used for uh, column storage whereas table is used for key value but uh, if i want to work with json document Okay, which is your Cosmos DB API? Okay, so you can just refer over here. So this is what basically are the APIs or different models in Cosmos DB. Yes, so if you have a node, you have edges and you have uh, relations between the vertices or the main node and then the edges, that is a graph. And if I have to use graph, we use Gremlin. So lots of, you know, these OTT platforms, Netflix, I think Netflix uses Cassandra. I'm not sure, but they use these kind of uh, databases itself. Okay. So, and like I said, 90% of your data nowadays is unstructured data. Okay, so using uh, Cosmos DB and or Cassandra or these kind of databases is becoming very popular. SQL is there, no doubt, but uh, all your Amazon and all these, okay, where um, uh, no, no structure is required, you have the uh, NoSQL database. And yes, last, is of course C. So like I told you, the two main advantages or the two most amazing features of Cosmos DB is that you can have multi-model approach. You can have Cassandra, you can have Gremlin, Graph, and of course, with just like I showed you all also, with just enabling one feature, you can make your entire database available to any re to every region that you want so actually you can select the regions as well okay so if you work in like once you if you want to work in cosmos db you will realize the feature okay you can select in what region you want it to be available it's all up to you like you become the administrator of that if you have the correct appropriate rights okay so with this we bring an end to module three so just a quick recap as to what we did in module three is that we looked at uh, the storage accounts what were the different types of storage accounts on azure okay what is the difference between blob and data lake and then we saw uh, the no relational database on azure that is the cosmos db uh, it has um, very uh, it has it is a multi model approach with where you can work with gremlin cassandra mongo and so on and so forth and then you saw the two uh, uh, features that is multi-model and the second is turnkey distribution which enables you to make your database globally available okay so this with this we end module three and now let's move on to the last and final module for the day mo module four where we will be talking about the analytical services or analytics services on Azure. Okay. A little bit in depth about that. I'll show you some demos of that as well. Okay. And of course, finally, we will be seeing how to visualize 
like I told you, I described a pipeline to you all. Like you ingest data, you collect it at one place on which the data engineer does cleaning transformation, right? So if he has to uh, do those cleaning and transformation steps, okay, he will need certain tools, certain ways, that is the ETL or the ELT out of uh, tools to do that, okay? And then finally, send it ahead either for machine learning or for visualization okay and to do that we need a data analyst right so we need to see those this entire process that is there this entire pipeline how you can do it on azure okay so when we talk about data warehouse okay so a data warehouse i told you all is like a, a is a huge database we can call it OK, where uh, you can write complex queries, you can do reporting, you can um, work with. Um, you can write SQL queries, you can create reports on that, create visuals on that. OK, so this is what and if you want historical data, you want to query about historical data, you can do that in a data warehouse. So generally nowadays, you know, this Data warehouse has become a very, very common mode of mode of trial, you know, storing data in any organization. Why? Because it brings in scalability. It's you can scale in, scale out very easily. Okay. If you use these cloud service providers tools, okay. And you can easily uh, uh, combine lots and lots of uh, traditional SQL queries along with the capabilities of business intelligence. OK, Power BI, you can do that OK, for your transactional requirements that are there. OK, so, you know, we have heard of this term big data analytics where the volume of data is large. And in the beginning, I told you like nowadays the volume of data is large. OK, whether it's captured in batches or it is streaming. OK, whether you are doing real time streaming or you're doing batch processing, the data is huge nowadays. Right, so we need a, a, a database that is capable of managing that size of data, and that is through the data warehouse. Okay, so data warehouse, um, the tool or the service in Azure is the Azure Synapse Analytics. Okay, so Synapse Analytics is nothing but earlier it was called as uh, Azure Data Warehouse. I think SQL Data Warehouse DW it was called, but now it has been changed to Azure Synapse Analytics, and um, it uses Apache Spark, okay, uh, as the engines to work with, uh, to help process your data, help clean your data, create reports, and all of that. Okay, so this is what is basically how you do large scale data warehousing. So like I said, the process starts from data ingestion to processing. OK, so for ingestion purposes, you might need a date. You might need an ETL tool. OK, like uh, Azure Data Factory or Snow. I mean, there are many ETL tools. I think SSAS, SSIS, I'm not sure, but there are many tools for that. OK, so you you can either do ETL, ELT, whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, there are many tools. One such tool on Azure is the Azure Data Factory, which I will be telling you all about. OK. Then you have to store it at one place, and that storage is nothing but the data warehouse. So Synapse Analytics, you can even use data lakes, okay? Um, at one in, in some cases, then you have to now create a model out of it. So you can do either machine learning or you can do uh, various other create. You can go it for uh, give the data for visualization, okay? So that you can make amazing visuals make um, you know uh, take decisions and so and so forth okay so this is how basically a data pipeline is okay so hadoop you can use for um, for big data processing like once you've got the data into the data warehouse or wherever or in a data lake so if you want to do uh create data frames out of it or you want to um, do map reduce or you know you need a big cluster to manage you know process data divide because the data is going to be huge in size so you can't one machine cannot do 
all the processing. You need to have various um, um, multiple engines in order to manage that. So Hadoop will come into picture there. Spark will come into picture there. OK, so if you want to work with, so I'll just show you where it comes. OK, so you get the data. OK, it comes from probably data lake, data hub, from SQL Server, from Cosmos DB, n number of places. Ah, uh, yeah, Spark is much better than Hadoop is what I feel. OK, I will list out those reasons in some time. OK, this is where you then you can use whatever you want. Once the data has been loaded, transformed, you, if you want to do more, uh, uh, you know, you want to create you want to work with batch processing, you want to create data frames out of it, you want to um, uh, write code, okay? You want to write code, not all things can work with just uh, with ETL tools, it can't work with that, but you want to, uh, you want to uh, have more uh, compute power, okay? Uh, ETL does not have that much, but if you want to do further uh, uh, manage your data in a much better way. You can use data breaks. You can use HD inside if you want. OK, Hadoop. OK, all these tools can be used. And then later you can create output out of that. You can give it to Synapse, either for data warehousing. You can give it uh, for visualization directly to Power BI, OK, uh, through Power Query Editor, anything you can do with that. OK, so you can create pipelines for it. You can trigger those pipelines. OK, um, you can. Um, whenever you can schedule whatever you want, whenever when you want to trigger the pipeline. OK, so this is what is how data ingestion looks like. OK, in uh, in an Azure environment. I, I can't show you a Spark demo. I mean, I mean. I'll see if time permits or I'll, give, I'll share the relevant link. OK, with whatever I have, I'll uh, try and show it to you. OK. Yeah, now coming to analytical data stores, like I said, uh, we have two types, data warehouse, data lake. So data warehouse, I told you, is more like a relational database. OK, uh, there you cannot just work with the traditional uh, data or SQL data. You can also work with transactional data and to top it, you can do reporting analysis. OK, write complex queries. OK, um, all of that. If you want historical data, the same thing like what I have been talking about. You can get it from a data warehouse, but you will not get it from a, a database. OK, and data lake to put it in simple terms is like dumping your raw data. OK, whether it is structured data, it is unstructured data, it is semi structured data, any kind of data that you are using and you're just dumping it like a dump place. OK, but the data is large in size. OK, that is what is called as a data lake. OK, it's more it's like a, a, a distributed system. OK, like how you find on technologies like um, Spark and Hadoop where it uses uh, HDFS. OK, so it is kind of stored in that way. OK, but the data is raw. OK, uh, you need to, of course, refine it. So you will need some ETL tool to work with it. OK, it can be SQ, it can be structured data, it can be semi structured data. OK, you need to work around with it. So uh, that is what is a data lake, like a dump house, you can call it. OK, and to top on that, if you want to work with asset properties, no, it does not require an engineer. If you have to now, um, if you want to process this data, you can make it readable uh, for further use, like for visualization or machine learning. For that, you will need a data engineer, right? So somebody has to make this data readable. So for that, you have the data engineer, OK? So these are some of the analytical stores that you can use Synapse, you can use Databricks, you can use HD Insight. OK, uh, so Synapse is like a data warehouse for large scale um, data analytics. OK, um, you can work. So it basically uses Spark okay, uh, for uh, doing all the processing. The engine behind is, is Spark. 
okay and you can have lots of flexibility okay when you have to work with apache spark on this environment you have lots of flexibility coming into picture okay you can create spark pools you can work with a single um uh, spark uh, environment i will show you all we'll do a small demo on it okay but we will not go much in depth okay then you have data bricks so data bricks we all know is uh and big data analytical tool okay so they apache have found uh data bricks so people you know if you don't know scala are i want to still work with data bricks of course but you know do need to know the language that's there but they in order to in Use Spark in a much simple way in a user interface environment. That's what Databricks does for you. Okay, so that's when Apache thought, okay, this Spark environment, I want to give it a much more simple way. It's not like no code, okay, but in order to access Spark, the environment earlier you have to write code, you have to give the path and all of that you need to do. You have to, yeah, kind of a low code. You can say you need to create that environment, install it, right? So if I don't want to go into that hassle, okay, I can just uh, create an account on the Databricks platform, okay, and I can start using it. So that's the ease that Apache brought in with Databricks and Azure tied up with Databricks. They think, okay, whoever has access to Azure can also, should also be able to use Databricks. Okay, so that's the kind of beauty that Azure and Databricks brought. So you can use, uh, get data from the block storage, mount data into the leak. Uh, they have a different file system called as Databricks file system, DBFS, that you need to use. Okay, in order to work with Databricks, you can get data from there. You can stream data into uh, Databricks. If you want to create an end-to-end -end pipeline along with Data Factory, you can implement a notebook into your Azure Data Factory. That is also possible, but just keep in mind that uh, or if you want to work with even SQL, you can do that in, or now you have the capability of doing that also in Databricks. Then another service is the Azure HD Insight. So HD Insight is also another, uh, what we call as a big data tool, okay? And it gives you lots of clusters like Hadoop, Spark. It has Spark also in it. Uh, it has, um, I think, Hive, um, HBase, Storm, all these uh, clusters are available inside Azure HD, uh, in Azure HD Insight. Okay, and you can select any of these clusters that you want to work with. But the base of this is Hadoop. Okay, whatever Hadoop like map reduce, um, sorry, the HDFS that is the Hadoop distributed file system is the base, and on top of these, the uh, the clusters work. Okay, but if you want to work with Spark, I will not recommend going for HD Insight. Uh, using Synapse or Databricks is a good tool. Okay, if you're working with Spark, um, and and the difference between Hadoop and Spark is um, Hadoop is more um, disk oriented. Okay, it uh, involves a lot of disk activity. Okay, like your ROM, I mean, the disk is involved heavily. Okay, so getting data and uh, storing data on a disk uh, slows down the process. Okay, uh, a lot. And um, yeah, um, so the involvement of the disk is high. So because of that, data gets it is processed really slowly. But whereas uh, on Spark, it does not use much of the um, it does not use much of the disk. What is involved is your RAM, okay, in memory storage that is there. So a lot, and you know, uh, RAM is much faster in processing, okay, and it has a concept of RDDs which really make it uh, easy to use, okay. So these are certain factors that really are, are you know help us uh, differentiate and what to use, what not to use, okay. So I'll quickly show you how to create a simple Synapse workspace. Okay, uh, it's uh, very fundamental that we are going to create. It's not going to be, uh, um, I'm not going to go in much depth. Okay, so oh. I will just go back to my portal. Yeah, I'll just close this. I'll just delete this because I don't need it. 
And guys, if you're not working with this, just keep in mind these Cosmos DB, all the databases, servers, they cost a lot. So it's recommended that you delete it. Okay, so now I'm going to come home. So if I go to all services. Okay, so here you can see all the categories of the services that are available in Azure. You want to do machine learning, you want to do IoT, you want to do DevOps, you want to work with containers and uh, not the containers from the storage. Okay, it's the containers, Docker containers, or you want to work with identity, you want to work with migration, all have been categorized for you and given. So you can just go and see what are the different services, like for, apply, for AI, what are the services, what are the cognitive services available on Azure. You want to work with machine, open AI, now we all know it's chat GPT if I want to work with, but still this is not available to everyone. You need to give a request and uh, based on that only you can use as your open AI. So I, I had signed up for it. So that is why I'm for the access. Okay, now we can come to analytics and you can see all the analytics services that are there for real time for batch processing. Okay, so we are going to go with Synapse Analytics. Yeah. I'm going to create one. So I'm going to use the same resource group. It's not necessary to give it a name, so I'm not going to give it. I'm just going to say my workspace. And now your uh, storage, OK, it's already there, OK. So guys, you have to do trial and error, see whether what name works. Okay, so this has been approved. Okay, I'm going to keep East US only as the uh, region. Yeah, so now uh, Synapse requires a data lake storage gen 2. Okay, uh, so you, if you don't have one, you can create one, but I already have one created. So if you recall, before we uh, uh, went for the lunch break, we had created a data lake storage account. So I'm going to use that. Okay, and it will get it will get a container name. Okay, by default. Just a minute, guys. Yeah, so whatever is the container, it will uh, use that. And now I'm just going to click on security. I'll just check. Yeah, this is fine. So I'm just going to click on review plus create. My screen is visible, right? Yeah, by default, it will use a data lake. It is. It requires a data lake. Synapse requires a data lake. Okay. So this is the cost that is there. So I'm just going to click on create.
No, no, don't use the private link hubs. Use the Azure Synapse Analytics. So you can search it, uh, search for it in the bar over here. Here you can search for it, Azure Synapse Analytics. Don't use this, use this, the first option. So the resource has been created. So I'm going to go to the resource. Okay, sorry. <laughs> go to the workspace. So this is your Spark, I mean your uh, Synapse environment. Okay, so now I want to upload a new file to my data lake store. Okay, so if I have to do that, I will. I can access it through my Synapse workspace. So I'm going to open my Synapse workspace. Order to do that. Second. This is all you wanted. Yeah, you need to click on this URL. Okay, so it'll link to your workspace. <laughs> so you can see, uh, you can work, you can visualize using Power BI, you can explore, analyze, write queries. Okay, you have your data, you can develop anything, create pipelines. Here as well, monitor it. OK, so this is how your Synapse environment looks. OK, so now. I'm going to go and go to new. I'm going to go to the data workspace link. So you can see there are two, uh, there is my um, workspace and to that I will have my data lake attached that we created with the data primary. So here I'm going to upload um, data. Whatever were the existing, there were no files in it. We had deleted it. So here I'm going to upload data. So I'm going to select. I have already downloaded a paraquet file. So I'm just going to use that. Okay. And I'm going to upload. Okay. So if you want to now work with or you want to write a SQL query, you want to write data flow, okay, you want to open a notebook on it, do some changes, you can do that over here, okay. You can also, now you will get two URLs with which you can upload data, uh, you can have, uh, you can share this with anyone who has the appropriate license, okay. So, So now if I come to my data lake storage account. Come to containers. Come to data. You can see the file has been uploaded. OK. So it can have you can use this URL. You can share this with anyone, create a SAS token out of it. OK, um, you can have some other you can have, you know, um, a URL of your uh, workspace also created. OK, uh, where you have uploaded this file. So you can link your uh, workspace, your Azure Synapse workspace with some other somebody else's data lake storage. Also get their files, work, compute. If it's a big data file, you can work around with it. OK, so this is just a simple example. Of how you can work, you can create notebooks. OK, you want a data frame, you want a spark table. OK, you want to create data flows, write a SQL query. OK, anything you want to do, you can come 
and do it over here. OK, you want to visualize using that data. You can do it. Just remember it these are uh, used for big data analytics. So for small data, nobody will, of course, use this. OK. So this is. Yeah, it is not attached. It is attached. No, we actually gave the name of our storage account right to the Synapse environment. So the moment I upload anything to the container of that account, automatically it will be attached to it. Okay. So this likewise, you can attach anything that you, I mean, you if you want to upload anything to the data lake, you can do that and you can process it in your uh, Synapse environment. So. So uh, here we saw about some of the analytical uh, tools that are there. OK. Basically about um, data factory, about Synapse, about uh, blob storage and all, all those things we've seen earlier. OK, so if I have to now, yeah, before I we do this, I just want to show you all about uh, data factory. I just want to tell you all about data factory. So data factory is basically a ETL tool. OK, and uh, it is used for, you know, uh, if you want to perform, you want to, there are multiple sources from where you're getting your data. OK, you can extract data from there and put it into transform it and put it into one destination. So I can create one pipeline of that. And then once you have loaded that destination could be a blob storage or database or data notebook activity of data breaks or of synapse or of HD inside that is totally possible. OK, so for that reason, you use a, um, a ADF. I mean, you use the Azure data factory. So I just I have already created one. I'll just show you all uh, that itself. So if I come to home, okay, that's it. Yeah. So I already have a data factory created. Okay, so you, it's like a studio that is there. So I'm just going to launch it. So a simple thing you have to do. Okay, like I'll just show you all how to even create it. Yeah, data factories. You just say create. All you have to mention is your resource group and the name to your data factory workspace. OK, so like how I have given. Um, this is the name of my uh, data factory workspace. OK, so I'm going to launch it. So this is your uh, data factory environment. OK, if I want to ingest data, OK, copy data uh, from one source to another, OK, like an EL, EL tool, I can do that. OK, I can transform the data. OK, but just keep in mind, like after you have extracted the data, you mentioned the load, uh, the uh, loading uh, destination, but it uh, ADF will first transform it and then load it to the destination. So that is why it is called as ETL. OK, I have lots of pipelines already created, so you can do a simple copy activity. OK, so I already have a copy activity created. So here what I'm doing is I'm just simply popping data from one blob storage to another. OK, so we need to mention source from where you're getting the data and the destination the loading. OK, so I have mentioned a source and in order to uh, link to the source, OK, you need a link service uh, that is there. OK, so a link service. I already have created so a link store link service is like a 
you know, link that you create, a symbolic link that you create to, to connect to your uh, database or to your data or to your block account, storage account, basically. So I have already created one over here. So I mentioned my storage account name and the key. We need to give it access. OK, and it will create a connection with the storage account. OK, so this is mandatory when you work with uh, when you have to extract data from a source. OK, so you need to create these links. OK, then if what activity is you want to do, OK, you can mention you want to do a simple copy activity, copy data from one source, load it into another source, probably a database. OK, or data warehouse also works here. OK, or you want to first do a sim or you want to transform the data before it is loaded okay so that is also possible okay so there are multiple activities you can even do machine learning you can do data breaks you can invoke a notebook okay uh, if you want to but you have to create appropriate um, uh, link service you have to create an appropriate pipeline for it okay you can do bulk copy activities you can do n number of things you can take input from the pad uh, from the user okay what he wants to input inside you can do various data transformations so i have i what i've done here is in this pipeline if i show you all so i've taken two sources and i'm joining them okay so let's say this is coming from a database probably this is coming from a block storage i have joined them onto one Okay, and I've created one source of sorry, one destination of both these five of these services. Okay, I can I can even decide what format I want, whether I want it in JSON, I want it in um uh, in paraquet format or what format I want. It's up to me. Okay, so here you can see. So I've I have you know split the data into three parts. Okay, one is a database. I think, yeah, all our databases, but they are uh, uh, divided into a condition. I have mentioned a condition like movies before 1960, then movies between 1960 to 1980, and then movies after 1980. Okay, so I've just mentioned that. Okay, it's based on a condition. You can even split it according to the rows, what rows you want. Okay, you can totally uh, do that. OK, you can filter out values, whatever values you want to filter out. You can do that. So you have lots of options to work with lots of activities. You can even invoke a power query. OK, like um, I will be telling all what is a power query. OK, then machine learning, any of the machine learning uh, services you want to execute experiment or anything. You can do it over here. OK, Synapse, so you can see you can do a, a Synapse notebook or you can give a spark job definition this is too much in detail actually but if you want to de define your own spark jobs like engines and clusters and all of that you can do it in this you can invoke an activity for that as well and create a client client out of that so this is what uh more or less how data uh, factory works OK, what are the main components in a data factory is the link service, which links to your source or to your destination. That is the thing. Then you have the. You have is the pipeline, OK, where you put the activities and activities are nothing but what you want to do in that pipeline. OK, so there are n number of activities that I showed you all, OK, that you can work with. So this is what is a data factory. OK, an ETL tool that you can work with. Oh, sorry. Um, my screen was not visible. Yes, it is similar to SSIS. SSIS is more or less like an on premise that you would use. OK, here it's more online, so I'll just show it to you all again. Is my screen visible now?
okay so this is how a data factory i already have a data factory like i said so i'm just going to launch it so these are where i can create pipelines so you can see the data sets okay so date uh, data sets like this is for my copy activity so you can see there's a source data set and there is a sync data set so if i want to visualize i can do that and like i said you need a link service to link to the actual uh, place or the destination where you want to store your data okay so this is what it is then what schema you want you declare sorry what type of file you want to store in it's up to you you can name it okay so i have selected a, a delimited file so i'll just quickly show you all how to do a simple copy activity i'm going to bring this activity onto this pipeline now i'm going to uh, mean the uh, do a source so i quickly create a new one i'll select a uh, block storage i already so now here you can see you have the option of selecting the type of your data so i am going to use the csv file okay if it's a json for you go for json if it's a binary format paraquet xml whatever okay you can use that i'm going to say continue i'm going to give this a name because it's my source or uh, this thing so i'm going to say source link okay and i am going to i can create a new one if you want to so this is the link service okay so here you give the name you give which account you want from so this is my subscription then it will automatically see all the storages that are there okay you can select any one of these storages okay so currently i have this i'm going to go with this and it will automatically load the key okay and i'll just give it link 1 at the moment i just say create now here i have the option of selecting the data so i'm going to go with data and i'm i'll just select this particular file okay and i can create a pseudo file like i showed you but uh, that's okay there's no directory actually you can just leave it as it is so i'm going to click on okay so your source has been mentioned now we'll select the sync so i'm going to go with uh creating a new one okay so it's on you whether you want to put it into a database you want to put it back to a data lake you want to put it to a storage account block storage account or cosmos db so you have n number of options you have third party options as well okay uh, i think uh, i think amazon is also there i'm not sure ibm or acl then no sequel you have these options services and apps you have the snowflake okay uh, all these options are there so currently i'm going to go with the block storage i'm just going to say continue and now i can select json it's up to me i want it to be copied in the form of a json file let's say okay here i'll just say destination data my screen is visible right it's not like it's frozen again just a quick uh, uh. okay great okay so you can select you can use the same link also i'm going to use the same thing but just i'm going to change the output i mean i'm going to put it into an output folder and i'm just going to say okay Okay, and I'll give it a name. Okay, let's say loan dot JSON. Okay, I can even create a, di di a directory. Here I don't want to. And schema, since we don't know what is the schema, so I'm just going to say none at the moment. Okay, and I'm going to click on okay. 
so a source has been done uh, a sync has been created okay and now all i have to do is just uh, publish all these things okay uh, publish means whatever changes you have done it is just going to save it okay that's as simple as i can put it okay so it's going to save all your uh, pipeline activities that you have done okay so publishing has been done your changes have been saved now you have two options either you debug okay or you add a trigger so you debug does not require publishing if you want to do testing validate or you know before you uh, publish those changes you want to see whether it's working or not then you go for debug but otherwise you have another feature called as add trigger so this requires publishing you need to save your changes before you um, uh, execute this pipeline put it to run okay because you have mentioned whatever you have to do you now you have to just execute it. So if I have to execute, I can either use debug or add trigger. So here I'm going to add a trigger. Okay, and just click on OK. So it will take some time to execute. So my pipeline has been executed. The copy activity is successful. So now if I come to this, to, to my storage account, come to containers, come to outputs, you can see now a loan.json file has been created. So if I want to view this file, I can view it. You can see a JSON file has come up. Okay, so this is how you can create a simple pipeline. Okay, there is still lots to learn in it. This is just a simple execution of a pipeline. Okay. Uh, in Azure Data Factory. Okay, so quickly, guys, if just put in the answers in the box. Yes, absolutely right. So if I want to work with pipelines for data processing in uh, ingestion, I will go for Synapse or Data Factory. Okay, now what must you define to implement a pipeline that reads data? So of course, like I said, you will need a link service in order to link it to your data, okay? So that you saw, and uh, I was not actually putting the data in it. I was only linking to it. And then now if I want to work with Synapse Analytics, what uh, distributing engine does it use? It uses Apache Spark, okay? So these were some questions that we... So do you all want to take a break now or in like uh, we can continue and after some time we can take a break. I leave it all up to you all. It's up to you all. Okay, so let's take a quick break. So we will, it's almost four. Okay, and uh, we will yeah this is almost the last module so we have completed one lesson of module four okay uh, after this module uh we will be looking at uh some sample questions okay um 
some DP 900 sample questions. I will be sharing actual questions that can come in the paper. Okay. And I will be showing you all how you can uh, schedule your exam, how you can, um, what reference links from where you can study. Okay. Um, I will be uh, showing all of that to you all. So post this module completion, we will be having a exam prep session. So uh, we can take a break now or after I finish module four also, we can take a break. So I'm leaving it up to you. So one person has told me he he wants a break now. What about the rest? Okay, so we'll go for a break. It's almost four. Uh, we'll resume our session at 4.20. Okay, so see you at 4.20.
Yes, guys, I all back. Please put a yes in the chat box if you all are back. Okay, so what we saw right now was some analytical tools, okay, but we also have a, a feature of, you know, processing data in real time, okay, uh, if uh, whatever we saw right now was nothing but batch processing. So what is batch processing? It's something that you collect the data and then once you read some amount, then you process that data, right? So at regular intervals like after an hour you'll process the data or after two hours or after one day you will process the data right but at times there are applications where you need to process the data do the analysis there and there okay that kind of processing is called as stream processing and with just not the size of the data even the speed at which the data is coming also matters in this type of processing Okay, so stream processing is nothing but uh, real-time data, data that is collected uh, uh, in actual time. Okay, for example, you have your IoT devices, like if they are tracking your fitness, they are doing it for every hour or like even your temperature. Okay, pulse, pulse has to be calculated, you know, every min, uh, second or something. So that is a real-time processing okay near to the time but batch processing is not that so when you uh, 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 use a credit card right and you do a transaction it is not transacted like you know it, if it has to be processed it is not processed immediately it is done only after like an hour or two hours after a thing after it has reached certain uh, limit Okay, then it will, yeah, whatever, 30 minute cycle, whatever is the uh, cycle. Okay, it will, after that, it will process. So, in batch processing, the data that is coming, it is grouped, it is processed later. Okay, and there are multiple ways we saw how you can process. Okay, whereas in real time, you have to uh, calculate, process the data there and there, like your IoT data. You calculating how much cars have passed in this particular uh, time frame. Okay. What kind of cars is passed and all of that. If you want to find out, okay, you want to count uh, the number of cars every minute, okay, rather than an hour or one day, okay, uh, you will use the stream processing. So if I have to do real-time processing or stream processing in Azure, I have multiple services to do, okay? Uh, we have something called as Azure Stream Analytics, okay? So Azure Stream Analytics is like a streaming service where I can query data in real-time, okay? Uh, let's say uh, I have data coming into my IoT hub, okay? Or event hub, okay? Or a blob storage, uh, real-time data is being ingested okay and i want to query that data because it is real-time data of course you can't use uh, you can't use sql database or something like that you need a different kind of a system to manage because like i said speed is involved uh, the velocity of the data at which it is coming is involved you know because 
that your processing unit should have the capability to handle that kind of data and databases don't have that kind of cap capacity. So we need something else. So we use a stream analytics service. You can ingest data from an IoT hub, okay, and put it to, uh, let's say, a block storage or n number of other things. Okay, so you can visualize the data on top of it. You can create functions out of it as your functions. You can put it to Synapse Analytics, put it into Data Warehouse. That is also possible. Okay, then another tool that is there you can use is the Azure Data Explorer. So the Azure Data Explorer is like a, 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 a analyzing tool itself for real time data, but it um, you need to you know a language called as Pusto query language that is the KQL in order to query that data. Okay, so data comes, you uh, data basically is collected in terms of batch processing. Okay, batches of data are collected. You put it into the uh, data explorer and then on top of that, you write a KQL uh, command. No, this is meant, yeah, you can say it can be used for IoT, but not. Uh, a, but for batch processing and not for uh, real time analytics. OK, no, real data is not coming in. OK, uh, you will have to use some other way of capturing that real time data. OK. So uh, this is what is uh, data explorer. You can log telemetries. OK, telemetries are something that you can calculate over the time. OK, you don't have to capture them in real time data. You don't have to constantly monitor the temperature or the pulse. Right, so it has to, it can be something that can wait. OK, or like a, like your stock market. OK, ups and downs. You need to monitor that in real time. Right, so you need a different service for that, but Azure Data uh, Explorer uh, is not for that. You are, you can do uh, you can put streaming data, but in terms of batches. Okay, so in order to work with those kind of databases, you have you need to query it, and you cannot use SQL. You will use something called as the Custo Query Language. Okay, so now we're going to just see a simple example how to you know run a, a how to create a Azure Stream Analytics job. Okay, and I'm going to show you how in real time data I can ingest the data from the IoT hub uh, into a blob storage. Okay, so let's just go. I'm going to go back to my portal. Uh, just before I go back, I want to. I want a Raspberry Pi simulator, so I'm just going to start that. OK, so there is a code already written over here. OK, I'm just using that code. OK, and I'm just going to replace it with my IoT hub. So I already have a IoT hub created. OK, and inside that IoT hub, I have registered this device that I'm using. OK, already registered that. So if you come to device management, OK, you will click on if you click on devices. You will get the information. OK, you can do lots of things with IoT Hub also. You can enroll one device. You can enroll group of uh, devices OK, onto this. But I, I currently am using only one device. OK, so I'm going to go into that and I'm going to take this connection string that is there. And I'm going to place it over here. OK, so this connection string basically contains the information of my IoT Hub device ID that I have. OK, uh, a shared access um, that is there. OK, so this code is basically monitoring the temperature and the pressure, humidity OK, of my surroundings. And the moment the temperature goes above 30 degrees centigrade, the LED is going to blink. OK, that's a, it's a simple code that has been written over here. OK, so this is like a BMP 280 pressure sensor that is there, which monitors the temperature and the humidity. So if I start, if I run this. So you can see. 
the humidity and uh, uh, temperature being uh, calculated. So this is not the actual data, guys. It is a simulated data that is there. Oh, sorry. Okay. So now on top of this, I am going to run a, a Azure Stream job. Okay, so I need to create one. So I'm going to come to home, search for Azure Stream Analytics. Yeah, come to Stream Analytics Jobs. We are, we are going to create a job. It's called a job over here. Okay. I'm going to go with webinar. I'm going to say my stream job. Let's see if it accepts. You can give any name. It seems to have accepted. So we are you putting it on cloud and whatever some minimum uh, streaming units, just select that. And now I'm going to create a click on review plus create. It has been validated, so click on create. So all the IoT hub configurations and all uh, you will have to study separately. So I already uh, have a knowledge of it, so that is why I could configure. So how many messages you want to send to the hub? Okay, there are there is a basic tier, there's a free tier, there is a standard tier in that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the resource. In a stream job, okay, we need to mention the input and the output, okay, like where are you getting the real time data, okay, whether it's the IoT hub, it's the event hub, you need to specify that, okay, and the destination, like how we did in Data Factory, we created a pipeline, okay. So, similarly, here also, I need to tell the input and the output. So, if you come to job uh, topolo sorry, topology, you can see that I have options. I can create input, I can query that data, I can share, I can put a, a I can put it into a destination. So first I'm going to give it an input. And I have multiple options to give it input. So I can use a block storage. I can use event or probably you're doing a batch processing. You can do that if you have it stored in uh, your uh, block storage or uh, data leak. OK, you can have an event hub. And uh, IoT Hub Kafka is still in preview. Okay, if you have knowledge of Kafka, you can use it. But now I'm going to go with IoT Hub. I'm going to say IoT Hub input. And you can see automatically my IoT Hub is being reflected. Guys, you can see my screen, right? My screen's visible. Okay, great. I'm sorry because of internet issues. I'll be asking you all these questions. So just bear with it. Yeah. So I'm going to save this input. So it's testing the connection to IoT Hub. OK, so now it is successful. Now I'm going to create, I'm going to give it an output, a destination. So here, if you drop down, you can see so many outputs that you can give to your stream job. OK. No, for query here, I will not use Custo. If you are working with Data Explorer, OK, there you will have to use a Custo query language. So here, if I put it into a, if I, if I put this streaming data into Azure Data Explorer, I will, if I have to query that, then I will have to go for the KQL. Otherwise, you don't need to. OK, so here I'm going to use a blob storage as my output. So I'm going to say blob output. And I'm going to use a different storage account. I'm going to go with this storage. OK, and I will use probably IOT IOT container that I have. OK, and I'm going to 
save the in save the information. So this takes a little time, okay, to be create to create the link, okay. Okay, the connection is successful. We are able to create a output. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, now I'm going to start the stream job. So what is it going to do? It's going to basically, whatever data it is getting from the IoT hub, okay, it's going to put into that blob storage, okay, and create a file, JSON file out of it, okay. Just delete this and put it again. There's some error in the input alias or the name. I don't know why.
sorry guys my network i'm facing a lot of issues okay i can't show you all this lab i require a good network and i'm not having one Hello. 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 Am I audible? Sorry, guys. I can't show you this lab. It's I don't know because of some network problem. I'll just give it another try. Let's see. No, not I'm not able to do it. Just refresh my screen. I'm just trying it again. Yeah, it has worked. So. Just share my screen. So let me just start this job once again. I'll have to create this again. Hey guys, I'll just uh, do it in the end again if it works. Okay, I just wanted to show you.
Okay, till the time this job is being done, we can do one thing. We'll go ahead, okay, and we'll come back and see the output for this. Okay, so this was about real time analytics. Okay, um, how you can ingest real time data, batch time data, okay, and work with different services in Azure related to it. Okay. Now comes the last part of your uh, uh, of this particular training. And that is visualization. So once you have worked in, you have, you know, ingested the data, done the transformation and loaded into a place. OK, the next task is to ultimately visualize the data to in order to. You know, uh, see uh, or make meaningful insights, make good decisions, okay? And uh, we tend to see or, or make good things um, or make good decisions once we visualize the data in the form of images or remember the data better when it is in the form of visuals, right? And we need some business intelligence tools to do that, okay? And one such tool is the Power BI. This is the most popular tool I have seen. All of them, you know, use this tool and uh, it is one of the leading uh, tools according to Gart Gartner. I don't know if you all know about it. He, uh, They have rated Microsoft uh, Power BI or Microsoft in general as the leader in um, in uh, business intelligence and analytics services. OK, so this is the most popular tool compared to yeah, out of the four quadrant. It has come out in the leader quadrant for like uh, five years. It is being in the leader con quadrant. OK, and you can work around this uh, tool. You can do so many stuff. OK, you can create visual, do data modeling, do from n number of sources. You can get this data. OK. So Power BI is a business like the BI is the in business intelligence is of course used to create visuals, reports, dashboards, publish those reports to dashboards. OK, and in order to do that, uh, Power BI has three services. The first one is the Power BI desktop. Which is nothing but I can call it like an offline user interface where you actually create your report. Yeah, it's not free. You need licenses for it. OK, uh, you need your work. Uh, you will you can't use your personal ID. You will need your uh, but you will need your office ID. OK, and you can be assigned a trial license. Yeah, so it desktop is free, certainly, uh, but you will cannot use your personal ID. You need to be a part of some organization. You need to give those information. OK. Then you have the online tool or the SaaS uh, service that is Power BI services, okay, for which you need a license to work with either a free trial or the pro license or the premium license, okay, that is definitely not free, okay. And then the third way in which you can work with Power BI is through the mobile app. So uh, Power BI, if you, like, if you want to, uh, you know. Um, Use the mobile app. You can you can visual, you can see the uh, visuals on the mobile app also. Okay, and you can um, you but you need to have the appropriate access in the mobile app. Okay, uh, through uh, if you want to visual, uh, you want to see the dashboards or the reports or something like that. Okay, you need the appropriate license or the access to the workspace. Okay, so Power BI is used for n number of things. Okay, you can model your data, you can get data from various sources, you can apply measures, you can do um, apply create. Uh, tables you can uh, based on some fun on some functions okay n number of things you can work with in your power bi uh, environment okay 
um, it's not just for visualization, okay, but whatever you want to do in the background, you want to do cleaning, you want to do transformation, you want to do merge columns, yeah. Okay, and you want to do modeling of your data. You want to visualize that data once you have uh, cleaned it, processed it. Okay, you can visualize it. So it's an end to end tool. Yeah, to work with. Yeah, and you are absolutely right. Okay, so in order to work with Power BI, you need to have the desktop app installed. So I already have the app installed. And like I said, you need to uh, have uh, your uh, organization ID, okay, uh, in order to work with it. Otherwise, it will not let you um, your personal IDs does not work over there. Okay, so this is your Power BI um, environment, okay. Um, this is where you will create reports. Okay, so Power BI desktop has three views. The report view, the data view, and then the model view. Okay, and from these many, or from these many sources, you can get your data. Okay, so if you want to get data from Excel, text file, from a folder, from a PDF, okay, all the folders, files, even from Azure, any of the services on Azure, whether it's Data Factory, it is um, Data Bricks, Synapse, KQL, okay, database. Now, anywhere from the blob storage, from anywhere you want to import data, you can get it into the Power BI desktop. OK, then this is called as the page and this is the report. OK, so a difference between a report and a dashboard is that a report is a offline dashboard and it consists of multiple pages. OK, whereas a dashboard is an offline report, I can say, but it is not. It does not consist of multiple pages. OK, it is only a one page report. So from multiple reports or multiple pages, I can create one dashboard. OK, so that is the difference between the two. OK, so let's I'm just going to show you basic stuff that you can do on Power BI desktop, how you can publish a report onto the Power BI service. So I'm just going to show some fundamental. Um, uh, this thing, OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get data. We will get data from the web. OK, or I have existing files also. You can get it from Excel as well. OK, and I will go for. I'm going to select this. So now if you want to, um, you know, um, do any modifications to the data, change, transform it. OK, you need to you have two options. OK, in Power BI, one is you load the data. So loading is just like you extract and you load it OK, into the Power BI desktop. That means the data is ready to be, uh, you know, um, to ready for visualization. But if you st still th uh, feel that, you know, the data needs to be processed, needs to be clean, needs to be uh, some modifications need to be done, you can do it in Power. Uh, you need to use a tool called as Power Query Editor. So Power Query Editor gives you that. Um, um, gives you the uh, gives is a place where you can, you know, actually modify that data. So it's like the kitchen of Power BI desktop. OK, so in order to uh, clean the data, transform the data, you need to click on transform data. So now what is happening? You can see. A new entire editor has opened. OK, so this is called as the power query editor. So this is where you can transform, add a column. OK, you can uh, merge certain uh, queries that or the tables okay uh, if they have a common factor linking them okay multiple from multiple sources you can put in data okay not just excel you can pull from probably 
as well. That is also possible. I'll just show it to you all how you can get more data. I just need to search for the URL. Just give me a minute. If I come here. Sorry. So if I come to home, I can add in. I can add a new source. I can say web. And I'll place the URL that I have. And I'll say OK. So you can see this kind of information. So I'm just going to say, OK. So now earlier there were only three sources. So now you can see even from the web, I could import the data into Power Query Editor. OK, then you can do lots of things, simple, simple things like you can merge data. You can. Uh, OK, so let's see how to do a merge data operation. So this is my sales data. OK. Then this is my product data and this is my region data. OK, so you can see like I have a sales representative column in the sales data. I have an item column, OK, which is common in uh, product ID, whereas sales representative is common in the region column. So now let's say I want to bring I want to merge this into the sales data. I don't want these two tables. OK, so I can do a simple merge operation and in order to do that, I have a merge query. OK, so I'm just going to say merge query because I wanted to merge in the same table. So I'm just going to say merge query unless you want it to be a new query or a new source. You can really do that. OK, so I'm just going to select on item and I'm going to select the product ID and I'm going to select a Item. So can you guys tell me quickly in the chat box what operation are we doing of over here exactly? Okay, so sorry guys. Sorry if my screen is frozen. I'm just wondering why is that. Okay, is my screen visible? Okay, great. So what am I doing? If I'm doing a merge operation, I'm doing a simple join operation. OK, so it's going to do all. It's going to bring all this information into this table. So it's like a left outer join. OK, that it is doing. So if I click on OK. So now you can see the entire table has come into has come in my sales data, which was not there, right? So now I will expand this table. And now I will say just I'll remove this prefix and I will remove item and I will just say please put in the product ID. I don't want item. I already have item column. OK, I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to click on OK. So now you can see. I'll just get this. Next to the items. OK, so this was my product ID. So you can see has come into my 
sales data. The exact thing has come into my sales data. Okay. So if I want to view, you know, I want to kind of with see what is the column quantity, quality, sorry, and the distribution, you have to come to the view tab. Okay, you can do the column profiling just to see how what is what kind of data distribution is there. Okay, uh, how many how many rows are there? What are there any errors? Okay, if I want to visualize that, I can do it. Okay, so I can even have a column distribution. How many values I have? Do I have any unique values? Okay. Uh, what can, what is the quality? Whether all the values are valid or not? Okay, whether they are empty or what is there? Is there any error in those uh, columns or not? I can do it using the view tab. So we call this as uh, just we just profile or do profiling of our data. Okay. Now, if I want to now, let's say I want to bring this region table also into my sales data. OK, so what I can do is I will uh, do another merge query. I can do that. So I'll just say merge queries. I'll select say, this thing. Again, I will go for region, select sales region and click on OK. OK, so you can see now the region table has come in. If I expand this, I select all and just select region and I'll click on OK. So the region column has come into the sales data. Now I'll just rename this. So you can rename it by double clicking on it. OK, or you can um, uh, yeah, just by double clicking on it, you can rename it and I'll just get this next to the sales representative. OK, then you can do multiple operations. You can replace certain values of a column. OK, so like let's say I don't, I don't want JL. I want it to be PL. OK, so I can come to transform replace values. OK, I'll just say KL and I'll say replace it with P. OK, so I'll just click on OK. So earlier, if you see, I had all KL. OK, but now if I replace these values. I get all P. So the KL has gone. If I want to capitalize anything, change the uh, this, I want to make it to capital, I can definitely do that as well. OK. Uh, one second. Yeah, so if I, I can do it to uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want, you can do it. You can trim it. OK, you can. Uh, split columns if you want to, but I don't think so. There is a column that I can split. OK, you can do all that stuff. Over here. Then you can group by. You can have a group by operation as well. OK, let's say you want to group on item or product ID. Or let's say quantity. Let's say you want distinct rows or. probably item or something. OK, you can just select it and you'll get whatever you want to. OK, there'll be an error. Of course, I didn't. Uh, okay, what you can do. Uh, we can group item. Based on product, something like that you can do.
yeah so you can do something like this you can give it a count you can rename it here also okay and you can just do how many how many printers have you sold or how many printers you have whatever you can do it over here okay so you can do a simple group by operation okay you can pivot tables unpivot tables okay similar to excel okay if you are familiar with excel you can do that you can add a custom column okay based on some example you can add a column based on some uh uh like you want to find out let's say to so just say insert i'm just doing some random operation guys you have to think about it and do it okay i'll just say price and if i click on okay so it will give me some value okay so you can see a column has been added you can change the data type okay let's say i will make it to a whole number okay so these are some operations that you can do in power query okay editor so if you want to do some changes you can do that okay so if you have made these changes you can just close and apply okay and all the changes that you have done all the data that you have changed will appear and get loaded over here so you can come to the model view you can see there is a relation established between the region and the product id with the sales data okay you can monitor that you can create hierarchy you can unselect or you can hide certain columns that you don't want to be seen in your actual data you can do that okay you can uh, if i come to the customers table okay or you can create hierarchy country region hierarchy you can just create come here create hierarchy and you can add the region to this part so you can see a city and a country region hierarchy has been created so this symbol indicates hierarchy okay you can do that over here okay so this is where you can create data modeling tabs you can add a measure okay where you can write dax functions i'm not going to go into much detail okay uh, you will have to explore this there's an entire training on uh, pl300 okay then you can add a column you can add a table okay based on some equation you can definitely do that okay then you here you can add the dax expressions new measure okay whatever you want okay like give it a name then you can say sum okay so what sum does you can calculate that okay and put it inside or you know so you can create measures like these inside this then you can do a lot of visualizations so i'll just get a data for that just going to select order 1 i'm going to load it okay so i can use multiple visuals over here you can see like i can go for Let's say this visual. I'll go for come to here. Here you can see there's a hierarchy already created by default. Uh, if uh, Power BI thinks there's a hierarchy, it will create. And you can see these summation signs. This means that it is already summarized. It thinks it's a you know a. a, a full of numeric value so it has already done summarization calculated the total value for you all so i'm just going to put year in this and i'm just going to say um total probably yeah so you can see year wise total sales that i'm making okay you can also use the pie chart your i will say put in category wise i want the total sales i can totally get that okay i can add hierarchy even in the visual okay so if i have to do that i can let's say product 
So if now you can see, I have got options over here. So if I want to go to the next hierarchy, you can see total uh, sum of total sales that to product wise. Okay, whereas here I'm getting only category wise. Okay, so beyond categories, you can have products like in beverages. What products I have? Another amazing feature you can use is this tree map. Okay, you can put in details as or. Uh, okay, so something like this, you can go one. Uh, one level below, so you can see for product wise how much it is. Okay. Then you can add something called as slicers. You can filter out. I'll just put it for at the moment. Okay. You can slice this thing. So you can see automatically the data is changing. Okay. So I just change this back to. A pie chart. You can do a lot of modifications. You can add the data that is there. You can add in, you can remove these links that are there. Okay. You can, uh, I will change this value to category percent total. Okay. You'll get a round of, of all the, this thing. Okay. I can give it a border. Okay. So I'll have to enable the border. I'll just make some changes and make give it sound corners. Okay, you can give it whatever you want. Okay, you can do, you can give it a title. Okay, to this. So, current title is this. You can change the title. Okay, of your this thing. So, now if I go for a, I can go for a table view. I'll show you a table view. In that, let's say I add. Customer wise total sales. So if I come to this, or let's say I'll go for a matrix, actually, it'll be better. And I will go for, let's say, ship country for columns or no. I will go for total in the column. No, I'll go for year over here. Okay, we'll get the total sales. Okay. So you need to do the adjustments accordingly. You can modify this also. Amazing formatting tools you have. So I'll just reduce this. Okay. I can come to values. I can give it. Um, Again, one second. Yeah, element. Second, I can't see the feature I'm looking for. Can say apply settings. Okay. I will have, I can do one thing. Yeah. If I on this, so you can see I can get different these things. I can change the colors if I want to. If I can come here, I can just say this for negative, this change. I can add icons. So what icons do you want? You can change. So I'm just going to go for this and select OK. So you can see I, the icons have come. I'll just change this color. OK, so you can see all these things. You can format these things inside. So there's lots to still, you know, do with this. OK, lots and lots of things to work around. OK. So this is uh, you can add a, a visual if you want. 
okay you can add a image you can um model the data that i've shown you can add a uh, lots of things so if i keep on going guys it will take me lot more time okay so we will i'll just show you all how to publish this so if you see you have an option of publish just save these changes okay save the file so i'm just going to say trial i'm just going to save it okay so i already have a workspace created so i'm just going to select that workspace and now i will go to my power bi services so here guys you will need your corporate ids with the appropriate license okay i will have to enter my organization id so i have a pro license So this is my Power BI uh, services. Okay. So if you see, I have workspaces. So workspaces is where you can publish your dashboard or your report. So a data set is created. So if I come here, so this is my report. Okay. I can create a dashboard out of this. So if I have to do, I can just come. Um, Sorry, guys. So if you come over here, there should be a pin. Yeah. So there's a pin option. So just say pin and you can create give if you have a dashboard already, you can create it. So I'm just going to say trial again. I'm going to say pin. So you can create a mobile layout. Okay, for people who want to see your uh, see the visual on that, or you can go to the dashboard. Okay, so if I want to go to the dashboard. It has already created in my so you see your dashboard has been created. So you can see the visual has come. So I cannot just bring it from one place. Okay, I can get it from multiple reports. Okay, I can publish it to my workspace over here okay so i already have one created over here report so if i have want to pin it to that dashboard i can definitely do that okay so i can say pin guys is my screen visible Sorry, guys, is my screen visible? Okay. So I can pin this to that. Now, if I go to the dashboard, you can see it has come. It has come com completely out of a different report. Correct. So this is how I can create one dashboard. I can give people access to this dashboard. Okay. So I need to come to my settings. Okay. My workspace settings. If I come to workspace settings over here. So from that, I can give anyone access. It's on me because I'm the admin. Okay, so if I want to give Chaitali access, I can give it. Okay, I will have to do some configurations. So I come and assign people over here, better contact list, who I want to give within my organization. So Chaitali, if I want to give, so you can see I can give it to her because she is a part of my organization. Okay, if anyone else also you can give, definitely, but you have to give them that access. Okay, so this is how you can work with Power BI, create a simple dashboard and upload that dashboard to the uh, services and give anyone access. Okay, whoever wants this, create multiple uh, uh, reports. Okay, and then upload it to a workspace. That is totally fine. Okay. 
so with this i we bring an end to the to module 4 okay so we saw about visualization in power bi okay there is lots to study guys i if we are running short of time so i can't teach you and of course there is an entire training on power bi uh, that microsoft has gotten uh, through pl300 i will talk about it shortly okay you can model the data create hierarchies create cardinality create visuals so you can use the map visual i did not show more, uh, most of it i showed the matrix visual uh, pie chart you can use a line chart you have slicers on filter you can filter out certain things and you can work with it okay so this is all about power bi okay and uh, just of now we will be moving on to exam prep session okay i will be briefing you all about the exam okay i'll be showing you all certain exam uh, some questions pertaining to dp 900 so i will just glance through the types of questions that can come okay i will share the links with you all where you can practice uh, these questions okay so these are some of the questions like yes and no you have to select yes and no okay uh, and this is an actual question from the exam okay that ha that has come okay uh, so you need to know some of the sql concepts which i did not touch okay um, you will have to do that okay so this is how this is the answer for it okay then you can have something like draw you have to select from the drop box okay like what is etl okay what do you do in etl okay i have already sql just uh, general sql concepts it's not pertaining to any uh, sql okay not uh, what is on sql server or on oracle just uh, simple sql concepts okay that are there uh questions can come from that which what is a dml i mean out of these what is a dml statement like you have insert drop alter and uh, let's say create so of course insert is a dml statement right so you have to select questions like these that can come then something like this can come okay so this is the answer so etl you get the data transform it and then you load it correct then you can have something like this a big question can come big question like this can come okay yeah and i forgot to mention about fact table and dimension table okay so there are two types of schemas that are there that is star schema and uh, snowflake schema okay yeah and um, the fact table is basically uh, something that consists of the primary keys i can say okay main attributes of some uh, dimension table yeah unique values that are there like you have like for this you can see this example here that like you have the sales table and inside the sales you have sales id which is your primary key and then you have multiple foreign keys inside it so but there is only one primary key and the foreign key is of other table like the product table the customer information table you can have sales processes and etc so the what are the other ids then the other ids become the foreign key right so this is a star schema so what if the dimension table has further more tables associated to it or related to it right so that is called as a snowflake schema i'll just quickly show it to your images
Yeah, so this is how a snowflake schema looks. So this is the fact table and then there are dimension tables. So till then it is a star schema, but if the dimension table has one more dimension table, okay, that is called as a, a snowflake schema in a data warehouse. So in Power BI, you can do these modelings using the mod uh, using the model view that I showed you. Okay. Um, so these are the two schemas that are there and these schemas have a fact table, have a dimension table associated with them. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have... Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is star schema that you see over here. Okay. And then uh, the customer is so say so sales is the fact table. So all the rest become the dimension table. Then you can get, you know, some questions like these, okay, where you have to, what is appropriate for what, you have to just drag these and put it in the appropriate place, okay? Uh, so to do that, you, these kind of questions can also come, okay? So the answer to this is this, okay? Then you can get something like these where you have to just select one answer. OK, uh, so here you can which which are the two characteristics of real time processing. Of course, low latency and data is processed as it is created. Correct. So you don't wait after one hour, two hour to process it. You process it immediately. That is called as real time processing or streaming processing that we discussed. OK. So something like these, you can get, you, are, you can select, you need to select two options, three options at a time. Okay, this, these questions can come. Then you have to do fill in the blanks kind of questions. Okay, or uh, something like this can also come. So the answer is the first option. Then again, the same thing. Yeah, you can question like these. Like uh, which type of database is Azure database for PostgreSQL? So the answer is pass. Okay. So if I tell you all, like uh, you have a virtual machine and on top of the virtual machine, you have a Postgre database, then what kind of a service that will be, whether it will be IAS or pass? Yes, guys. Let's say I have a virtual machine and on top of a virtual machine, I am deploying a PostgreSQL database. So do you think it will be PASS or it will be IAS? I just got one answer. What about the rest? Yes. No, it will not be PASS. It will be IAS still because you are deploying, you are creating a virtual machine. Okay, you are deciding what a backend you want, what infrastructure you want, you are deciding, and then on top of that, you are running a another application. But whereas when you uh, use Azure database for cross gray SQL, okay, you are not worrying about the infrastructure, you're just deploying the application. So there is a difference. So questions like these can come in the exam, okay. And again, related to visualization. Okay, dash is a chart. Okay, so you need to focus on uh, the types of visualizations that are there. Okay, so here is a tree map. If you recall, I showed you also what a tree map is. Then you can get something like this as well. Okay, pertaining to, like I said, SQL. Okay, uh, questions related to that. So the answer is atomicity. So atomicity, like I said, is either a success or a failure. So your transaction either succeeds or fails. Okay, so this is then another, uh, this thing. So you can see the answer is graph. Okay, because there is a vertice, vertex, there is a, sorry. 
there are nodes to it and there is a, a relationship being established between the nodes so it's a data store okay then something like this again related to the roles you can get so of course the answer is data analyst because you're yeah you're using business rules okay so if you want to do that visualization analysis of the business is done by the data analyst yeah then pertaining to one of the access tiers okay so this is the answer to this and then we keep on repeating okay just you can have an option to select two three one okay all of these options can come in okay so these were some sample questions that are there that can come in the exam i've actually put or you know got them from the some some of the questions that can come okay now how to register for the exam okay you i will paste this link okay if i copy this link i'll just show it to you all so this is where you will come okay if you scroll down you can see there is an option for you to uh, uh, give or schedule the exam so you can either schedule it with pearson view or you can schedule it with certi port okay if you want to go to a data center and give the exam you can use the certi port but if you want to give the exam from your home okay you will go for the pearson view uh, this thing okay and like chaitali has already put in the chat box that if you want to uh, give the exam okay so if i go for the indian rupee the exam will cost you this much but if you uh, take the exam code from us and since we are microsoft sort of gold partners okay we get more uh, exam codes at a discounted rate okay so in early you can see a difference of one or uh, 1200 rupees okay 12 i am just giving a rough estimate okay you all can just calculate it later okay but you can see you're just uh, getting it at what 23 something 2300 instead of 3600 okay or rather 3700 you're getting a great discount around 40% okay i don't know i'm not just estimating it okay so you all can take uh, a exam code from us okay then uh, apart from that you can take a free practice test assessment okay it's completely free okay i let's see if this is working okay you can just register for it go give the exam okay i have not actually created a profile over here so you can do that okay you can give a free uh, assessment you can just come to learn.microsoft.com i'll share this link with you cuz i have no profile this log out from here so on this website i will not recommend that you all use your uh, your organization id so you can come here all the details related to the certification you can find it here okay there are modules associated with it so this is where you will actually come and study okay all the slides that i have made i have made from this particular website itself okay so you can come do the uh, uh, learning from here so if you see all the information okay all the date all your 
all my presentations are also from here. So you can just come and study from here for the exam. OK, you can take a free assessment that I've already shown how you can schedule. You can do. We have discussed some examples. OK, and I think Chaitanya has already shared the course achievement batch. So it is nothing but this. OK, all these badges that you are going to get. OK. Um, uh, and the added advantage that you're do doing this training with us. OK. Uh, now I will just talk about about the exam. OK, like I said, uh, it's completely different. OK, not how you would take an online exam generally. OK, so the exam is about an hour's time. OK, it is for one hour. OK, and you will you can expect around 40 to 60 questions and they're all MCQs. OK, and they are. Um, some of them, like I showed you all can. The weightage actually we do not know. It's Microsoft who decides what is the uh, weightage. OK, so you one question can have two, three marks. How much ever we don't know about it. OK, so uh, can be multiple choices where you you can. Um, where you have to select questions. I mean, you have to select the answers. There can be one answer. There can be two answers. OK. Then you don't have to do any practical uh, demos. You don't have to do anything. OK, you just have to simply uh, it's MCQs. Just select the correct answer. OK, and you need around 700 marks. That is 70 percent you need to in order to clear this exam. OK, and the most important thing is there's no negative marking. So just mark OK uh, the questions, the answers to it. OK. So the link that I showed you all guys is the study material. I will share the link in the chat box. OK, learn.microsoft.com. That is the link. OK, I'll just do that right away. So from there itself, you have to study. All my presentations were also I made out from there itself. OK. And then create a account on the loan portal. You can uh, try the free assessment exam so you can get an uh, idea of it. You can even uh, use the sandbox. They have a sandbox uh, as to how that exam looks like. OK, uh, you can try that out. OK, so the same link that I shared with you all, I've shared it in the chat box as well. OK, now you might be thinking what next after data fundamentals? OK, you might all be wondering. OK, so this is like I said in the beginning, it's a foundational course. OK, and it's just covering the fundamentals of data. And as you know, we did not go in depth. Every service, trust me, is like a bigger picture. OK. Every service has a different meaning. OK, and um, you like like I said, you, if you want to uh, be a data engineer, you need certain diff you need to be certified in that you want to do machine learning. You need to have different certification. You want to do a data analyst. You will need a different certification altogether. OK. No, not every three years. OK, uh, I will I will talk about that. OK, so let me just give you a brief introduction of the advanced certifications that you can do after you have uh, done the DP 900 certification. So you can do DP 100, which is really pertaining to the data scientist. OK, well, once the data is ready, what to do with it? You can apply machine learning to it. So for that, you have DP 100. The certification it's a associate level certification okay and we provide trainings on that okay so chaitali has already uh, shared uh, required information in the chat box you can just refer to it you can get back to us like you want to get certified on dp100 we will help you with that 
Okay, and these certifications, trust me, guys, uh, if you purchase the exam codes from us, it is relatively cheap. Okay, you get around 40% discount. Okay, so this is one way, one track you can go. You can then go for DP300, which is a database administrator. Like when we did the data rules, I talked about the uh, uh, I had talked about DBA, that is the database administrator. So if you want to do that, only and only pertaining to the administration, managing, maintenance of databases, you should go for DP300. Then if you want to learn about uh, Cosmos DB, go in depth. It's not a associate level certification, it's just a specialty. OK, uh, it does not fall under the associate or the advanced level certification. OK, it's just talking about Cosmos TV. That's it. So the certification is DP4 to 420. Okay, You can offer that as well, but it does not have any value. I mean, specialty does not have any value. It's just like a certification that you have done. OK, it will not give you a tag of associate or expert. OK. Then the most popular is the PL 300. People are like people want to get certified on this. OK, so they it is called the Power BI Data Analyst. OK, the most um, commonly used tool for visualization of a BI nowadays is and the certification associated to it is PL 300. Then you can do DP 203 if you're looking for data engineering. OK. Uh, yeah, if you want the exam code for PL3, just contact Chaitali. Uh, she will give you all the information related to the exam codes. OK, you can call us. We, the number is also being given. You can write to us. OK, so if you want to do data engineering or want to know more about data warehousing, uh, Synapse and all of that, for that you have DP203. OK, and then finally, if you want to do uh, advanced level in P after PL 300 reporting to the enterprise. OK, uh, you can go for DP 500. OK, so these are some of the paths that you can take after DP 900. DP 900, like I said, is just an overview of all these services. OK, and it's up to you now what you want to uh, do uh, once you are certified on DP 900. OK. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much. If you have any queries, you all can put it in the chat box. I am there. Chaitali is there. OK, we still have 15 minutes. If you, if you don't have any queries, thank you for attending this training. I hope you uh, can go and uh, give this certification. OK, get yourself certified. And trust me, uh, certifications just enhance your resume, enhance your uh, a job profile, OK, uh, it's just an add on benefit. And trust me, I am the example that is there, uh, OK, in front of you who have benefited from all these certifications, OK? And trust me, Microsoft has these amazing, amazing tools, OK? Yeah, and uh, if you want to practice, you can practice. Uh, yeah, I forgot that one detail. So if you want to try, you can create a, a Azure free trial. I'll just share the link for that. But you will need a credit card, guys, in order to create a free uh, account. OK. You will need to have a free account. Uh, you'll need a credit card, OK? And uh, you will. You can then start practicing. I'll share the lab links as well, OK? The GitHub labs that you saw. I couldn't do all of them because we had some time, time constraint. So I will share the link for that. You can try shown over here some of them some of them work some of them did not okay so you can try it out once you have your free trial account created 
and this is the site that you have to visit for all the material related to what I have done today. So thank you so much, guys. If you don't have any questions, you can leave. If you have questions, please put it in the chat box. I am there. Chaitali is there to answer those questions. Thank you, Mansi, for this certification training. Uh, guys, I hope you had a great time learning with us. I will request you all to submit the feedback form. I have set the feedback form link in the chat box. Guys, please make sure you submit your feedback on the feedback form. Yeah, guys, the feedback will really help us. So please do give us your feedback. Guys, I will request you all to just submit the feedback form uh, as your feedback is extremely valuable to us. So make sure you submit the feedback form. Great. Uh, also, the recordings will be available to you all on our official YouTube channel. So do subscribe to the YouTube channel link as well. I have shared the details in the chat box, so go through it. You will get YouTube channel link details through which you can connect with us for the certification information, uh, the discounts which we give. So you can connect through the email ID or the number which I have shared in the chat box. Uh, 